Hello everyone, my name is Cody Bunton. I'm a professor of informatics at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. In this talk entitled Artificial Dissimilarity, Multimodal Content, Similarities in Online Disinformation Campaigns is work I've done with Vishak Padmakumar, Richard Bonneau, Jonathan Nagler, and Joshua Tucker. The context for this work is online disinformation campaigns, as much work has been done on understanding the role of the Russian Internet Research Agency in the 2016 US presidential election and in ongoing disinformation campaigns and their behaviors across online platforms and their strategies. And this is a glo increasingly a global issue as shown in the 2019 Global Inventory of Organized Social Media Man Manipulation Report from the Oxford Internet Institute where they found 70 countries that showed evidence of organized social media manipulation campaigns last year. And the goal here, the motivation for this research, is to understand the behavioral characteristics that might differentiate these malicious disinformation campaigns from more legitimate campaigns. Because the things that we see around online coordination are not necessarily or intrinsically antisocial. So we want to understand what makes these clearly malicious intent kinds of campaigns of disinformation different from more legitimate political campaigns or even marketing campaigns. So in this work, we focus on political disinformation and we come up with a pair of hypotheses that we think help us understand how these kinds of, of campaigns may be, may be differentiated. First, in hypothesis one, we expect that politically motivated organizations should exhibit some similar political messaging. The idea being that regardless of whether the intent is malicious or benevolent, that an organization that has a political goal must coordinate around a, a core set of political messages to further that goal. But that's not sufficient for antisocial behavior, so in, we introduce hypothesis two that covert disinformation campaigns should also exhibit significant differences in the general content they share. Whereas legitimate organizations running legitimate campaigns will focus on this sort of political, um, political coordination, more antisocial or covert malicious campaigns need to broaden their appeal to a larger audience and build audiences among people who may not be interested and engage with organizations or other social media users uh, in a potentially inauthentic way to further their message, build their audience, and make their, their goals appear more appealing or uh, more well supported by the larger popula population. So in this work, we'll focus on trying to understand these behavioral signals from a set of a data set of online troll accounts and the text they share, images, links, and YouTube channels they share. We do this across two platforms, specifically Twitter and Reddit, uh, using data published by both of these platforms on Twitter as part of their electoral integrity data set, and on Reddit as part of their transparency report from several years ago. What this gives us is about 3,000 Russian IRA accounts from Twitter and about 1,000 accounts from Reddit. And for a critical comparison, we provide two comparison groups, specifically set a set of 5,000 politically engaged uh, Twitter accounts and Reddit accounts, and a set of 5,000 random accounts also sampled from both platforms, as this lets us differentiate behaviors from the Russian IRA from what we might expect in more legitimate kinds of online behavior. Now, we operationalize this online coordination by looking at the similarity of accounts within these different groups by aggregating the account level behaviors to these groups and then evaluating similarity between them, we can construct metrics that let us identify or evaluate how similar these behaviors really are. And we do this by looking at a vector space of content sharing, where we can project accounts in each one of these groups into a particular vector space based on the images or text or links they share. And then for each account, we can create pairs of accounts and evaluate the distance or similarity between these accounts. In this particular project, we use Euclidean distance. You could also use cosine similarity. We've done some robustness checks here that show us that the results that we get back are not dependent on our, on our distance metric. And when we aggregate at the account level and then look at this sort of mean Euclidean distance between accounts in these different groups, we can evaluate the similarity among these groups. And we do so looking at vectors of text, vectors of images using image embeddings, vectors of domain shared, and vectors of YouTube channel shared. To look at links and evaluate the similarity for links, 
we simply count up the number of times a particular account has shared one of these domains, looking at two different kinds of domains. First, we look at 150 popular domains across these different population samples. And we also look at a core set of 150 politically oriented news domains. This lets us differentiate political content from sort of more general content. We also look at YouTube channels, looking at the individual YouTube channels these accounts have shared, specifically 150 most popular channels across these, these groups, evaluating the same kind of vectors for each one of these accounts. For text sharing, we rely on fast text to create a low dimensional embedding for the text that these accounts have shared, which we then aggregate to the account level to create an average uh, text embedding for accounts in each one of these, or for a given account in each one of these data sets. And we do the same thing for image sharing, where we create a 300 dimensional embedding of the images and the visual content shared by each of these accounts across all of these uh, data sets using the devised deep visual semantic embedding model. So now that we've talked about how we operationalize this similarity, we can talk about what sort of expectations we have from these hypotheses, given the similarity and metrics that we have. So first, in looking at similarities in political messaging, our expectations are, if we look at the within group similarity of the Russian IRA, we expect these accounts to be much more similar to each other than a pair of selected politically engaged accounts. The idea being that these IRA accounts are focused on this core set of political messages that are specific or core to their, to their overall political goal. Whereas your general political accounts uh, may talk about any number of political topics. We also expect the political messaging for the IRA to be much more similar than the random kinds of content produced by random accounts as well. Looking at hypothesis two, we have a couple of other expectations as well in terms of overall messaging. The key here is we swap the ordering, where in H1, we expected IRA accounts to be the most similar. Now we expect them to be much less similar, the within group similarity to be much smaller than the within group similarity for political accounts. That these, and this is driven by the IRA's need to sort of appear more broadly interesting or broadly appealing to a larger set. Of, of accounts than your politically engaged accounts who might be focused on these political topics. And the IRA may be focused on many apolitical topics to sort of build audience. Relatedly, we expect the IRA's within group similarity to again be much smaller than random accounts. The main idea here being that the IRA in their effort to appear uncoordinated and build a broad audience, they have to appear very divergent from each other in a way that's, that will appear inorganic or inauthentic compared to what you would expect from two otherwise uncoordinated or unconnected random accounts. But we still expect or anticipate that the IRA will be most similar to politically engaged accounts in terms of the kinds of content they share as compared to random accounts. So I can talk about some, some results that we have for this. Uh, first, looking at political motivation and political messaging, if we look at these political domains that we have. We have two graphs here, the top one being these mean pairwise distances in Reddit, the bottom mean, being mean pairwise distances in Twitter. And we see some, some consistencies here. If we look at the first, the within group similarities, we look at the yellow, gray, and blue curves, the yellow representing the within group similarity for random accounts, gray being within group similarity for IRA accounts, and blue being within group similarity for political accounts we see a few things. First, there's some inconsistency across the platforms. At least in both platforms, however, we see IRA accounts are consistently more coordinated in the political messaging or the political domains they share than otherwise politically engaged accounts, suggesting there is a core political message that's being shared here by the IRA accounts. But in Twitter, we see that the IRA accounts are actually the most similar, that in Reddit, we see random accounts share a maybe core set of political domains that are very popular, potentially the New York Times and the Washington Post, but in Twitter, the IRA accounts appear the most similar of any set of accounts that we have. So what we see in terms of similarities in political messaging for hypothesis one, in both Twitter and Reddit, we do see support that the IRA is much more similar to each other within group than political, politically engaged accounts. We only see support on Twitter, however, for the IRA being more similar than what we'd expect for random accounts. If we look 
Further at H2 and covert disinformation and significant differences in general content sharing, we see some consistency in text and image sharing. So this I understand is a, uh, is a noisy slide. The main thing to take away is the blue curve being the political within similarity group, the yellow curve again being random to random, and the gray curve being IRA to IRA. Across all four of these figures, we see that the IRA is furthest to the right and the political groups are furthest to the left, suggesting that the political groups are sharing a core set of, of text and images. They're all sharing kind of similar content to each other, whereas the IRA is sharing very different content and actually content that's much more different than one would expect from sets or pairs of random accounts. So we see that yellow curve is consistently in between the blue curve and the gray curve. Looking across groups here, we also see consistency in text and image sharing uh, across Twitter and Reddit, where in all four cases, we see the Russian IRA accounts are much more and significantly more similar to political accounts than they are to random accounts in the text and images that they share. We start to see some differences when we look at popular domains, however, or links to popular domains. Again, we start to see some inconsistency where in Reddit, the IRA shares very similar links. That gray curve is actually the furthest to the left. But in Twitter, we see they are highly divergent compared to political and random accounts. So there is some difference here where they're pot potentially engaging in, in audience building in Twitter and maybe in Reddit, they're focused on a particular set of, of popular domains. If we look across groups, we see again some, some divergence or inconsistency where in Reddit, IRA link sharing is most consistent with random accounts. This is different than what we saw in text and image sharing where they were more similar to political accounts. And in Twitter, there doesn't seem to be any significant difference between random accounts and political accounts in terms of how similar they are to the IRA. In YouTube channels, we start to, to see more what we saw with text and, and images. But again, we see some inconsistencies across the platforms. Uh, YouTube sharing here appears more divergent than random, but is more coordinated than political, as we saw with political domains. And in Twitter, YouTube sharing is back to being the least similar, as we saw with text and images. So at least on Twitter, what we see with YouTube is this potentially uncoordinated or like broadly popular or broad appeal kind of behavior. And in Reddit, we see this more coordinated sort of uh, pushing a, a core core message. Looking across groups, the IRA is consistently closer to random accounts, which is what we saw with link sharing, and YouTube channel sharing behaves, like I said, more like link sharing and not like text and image sharing, which is kind of surprising. So if we go back to our expectations from our hypotheses, we can talk about whether the IRA was, in fact, less similar to each other than political accounts, and we see broad support across all four modalities in Twitter. and text and image sharing in Reddit. For whether the IRA appeared much less similar than random accounts, we see more support for this. We actually can see consistent support for this across all four modalities and, or in all four modalities in Twitter and three out of the four modalities in Reddit. And then for our expectation that IRA would be more similar to political accounts than to random accounts, we actually see uh, very mixed evidence for this. So we see this, we see support for this in both platforms for text and image sharing, but no support for this in, in link sharing and YouTube sharing. So overall, what does this tell us or how does this answer our questions about motivation and whether behavioral characteristics differentiate these malicious disinformation campaigns? And what we find is there does appear to be some sort of coordination around political content where, where at the same time we see artificial differences in overall sharing. So going forward, we may be able to use this as a metric to evaluate or differentiate uh, disinformation campaigns from more legitimate campaigns. So there's a lot of future work here, explicitly looking at other, other uh, cases of disinformation, separating political and apolitical content in other kinds of modalities, since here we only did it for links, and then these building, building these metrics to actually evaluate or measure this potential for disinformation campaign kinds of divergence versus more legitimate campaigns where we would expect to see less divergence across apolitical content. All right, thank you very much. As I said, my name is Professor Cody Bunton from the New Jersey Institute of Technology, and this was work done with New York University's Center for Social Media and Politics.